and last but not least, the capacity building group, which will hopefully tell us how we can bring all the other three groups together. Thanks, Mike. Last but not least, um, people say that uh, the world stands on three things. Masking tape, tie wraps, and quick glue. So we're supposed to bring all of these things together. What should we use? Hindi. Crazy glue? Huh? Hindi. Hindi. That's also the... Thora baad na madam. Thik hai, bas abhi... Me anglesi baat karo. Thik hai, sir? Um, so we basically um, dealt with uh, uh, three levels of capacity building, government, industry, and local. Um, before I start, I want to report that we've done it the wrong way around. We started with government and ended with local. By the time we got to local, as usual, we were out of steam, the car got stuck, there was no electricity, so we got a little thin on the local. But, government. One thing that became very, very clear from the beginning was that capacity building is extremely important. But, training actually costs money. And not very often do we actually make the money allocation for training programs. And a lot of people are having coffee, and those of you who are having coffee, maybe you can keep your voices a little bit down. Shh. Ah, silence has descended. Um, so, that was a major challenge, and we tried to address it with uh, um, recommendations. So the first recommendations. The first one was one needs to aggregate all the different offerings that are available. Government has many, many schemes, and uh, uh, Mr. Agarwal was very clear in, in, in pointing out to some of these at the Panchayat level. We thought that aggregation even further or enhancing that would be uh, an end of the hour. Second thing is incorporate capacity building as an integral part of any infrastructure development, uh, be it in the wireless uh, a sphere, in the connectivity sphere at large. Um, the third thing is optimization of demand-driven uh, uh, training needs. Because it's not only enough to say that we need to develop training, we need to actually tailor it to the local areas. And what is better than actually having the local people speak for themselves in terms of what they need? And we were very honored to have uh, a member of a local panchayat to actually give this particular recommendations coming, no doubt, from his own experience. Um, there was a suggestion that we need to create content um, that is relevant to the needs of local areas. Um, somebody suggested maybe a Bharat uh, YouTube type of thing. Um, it was accepted, but people wanted to comment also that it is quite difficult to develop it because it needs a huge um, a development uh, uh, a community to maintain the initiative. So good, but um, one needs to remember that we need to have people developing it. Um, the last recommendation at the government level is that government has huge infrastructure. Uh, one of the participants mentioned that uh, the biggest piece of infrastructure and in connectivity in this country belongs to BSNL. Um, if government tries to make uh, this infrastructure more easily accessible at the local level, uh, this might be a great contribution to enhancing um, capacity and accessibility. Just imagine if BSNL opens uh, some of its dark or light infrastructure for local operators. For example, I know this little company called Air Jaldi, maybe they'll be interested. I'll talk to them afterwards. Um, the next level is industry. Um, the recommendations were partially for industry and partially um, uh, alluding to what industry could do. So the first recommendation was uh, industry should develop a heart um, and actually begin to feel things. That's very interesting and uh, um, I hope industry will indeed develop a heart. But more seriously, um, one thing was people suggested that industries should tailor their solutions to local needs. Um, someone was just mentioning that uh, one needs to actually develop hardware and software that is more appropriate. And people were quick to respond to say that industry actually always responds quickly. If there's a need, the industry will be there. If there's money to be made, the industry will be there. Very interestingly, um, we had a government representative with us, Mr. Agawal, who said, um, this is all well and, and good. The government is always very suspicious of the industry because they always have ulterior motives. But 
if the industry makes its motivations clear, then it's on the table, we can discuss it, and we can accept it or reject it. So why not come clean and say, you know, we want to get rich, we want to make money, and we want to sell our services in rural areas. Great. Let's see how government can engage with that. Um, again, local people said that industry should try in as much as possible to bring industry to the local level. Not to seek to continuously ship stuff out, but actually bring the industry to the local areas. And that's where infrastructure is very, very important. Um, along the same lines, uh, um, the, uh, a very, very interesting phenomenon was highlighted by a number of participants, and that is the fact that industry um, develops capacity when it needs it. Um, people were mentioning the case of uh, Nasek, where uh, uh, Jindal was building uh, a huge uh, a piece of infrastructure and didn't have the local capacity. Um, so, uh, lo and behold, it opened its own schools and started training people. Um, and industry will continue to do this. So, so long as the enabling environment is there, um, the group felt that the industry could respond and could actually be a very important player in building capacities. As I said, when we got to local, we were a little thin, but uh, uh, we only have three recommendations. One is, um, of course, work with the local government, um, make sure that there is uh, good cohesion up to the local level, and that's where uh, portals and uh, connectivity is extremely important. Second thing is piggyback on existing infrastructure. Utilize existing infrastructure. Um, again, I'm just going to hog the mic uh, for Air Jadi for just a second. What we see many times when we do work in rural areas is that there is existing infrastructure. Many government schemes of the past, what have you. A lot of times it's not available, it's not accessible because it belongs to some, minist some ministry or some post office or some somebody and the key is with the teacher who's left for the local city and, you know, um, talk to you in the shelter. Um, so trying to utilize the local infrastructure. The last thing is make your needs actually known. Pressure those who uh, can actually make infrastructure available. Um, I think that the thought was that in local communities there um, is not always the knowledge of how much power local authorities or local people actually have. So what happens if one day you wake up and you say we have a connectivity tower here that uh, is growing uh, moth and somebody has put a TV antenna on it but we can't use it for connectivity. If we get up and say we want to use it, uh, we can use it. Um, I'd like to thank all my team members who were very active. Um, did I miss anything, team members? Can other team uh, can give some suggestions on Yes. Okay, I've been working on For you, madam. <laughs> uh, one of the suggestions that I'd like to really add on on the capacity building is that we really look at capacity building as a strategic intervention also, not just as a requirement-based uh, strategy. Like for example, uh, in India, at least, we have that particular problem of quality. Now, quality needs to be a strategy that has to be followed, especially for the rural and especially when we are trying to really look at the rural communication. We need to build in quality right at the lowest bottom at the, uh, this thing to really ensure that the quality related capacity building is done for, from everything to right from the, the equipment to the uh, delivery of the service. So there has to be a kind of a special emphasis on uh, certain strategies, competitiveness, employability. How? These are the three areas okay, that we Okay, but we, the same challenge we have for all members of the group. How? What's the recommendation? The recommendation would be to really kind of look at quality building of, uh, programs right across everything that you need to really do. If you are in school education, school education needs to have a quality uh, program. And uh, that is the only way that we can really kind of scale it up right up uh, to, the, to the top level. I, I personally totally agree. I hope my group uh, agrees. So whatever you do, do it with sincerity and to the highest quality that you can provide. True? I mean, true summary. Absolutely. I believe also it's and true personally. Same thing on uh, the, skill, uh, the competency and the skill development. Uh, so whenever you're really trying to really look at, uh, try to look at the empowerment uh, of livelihood. So if you connect the, the, the work that you're doing to the livelihood of people, absolutely there is no way that you can fail. So you need to really kind of bring in uh, the capacity to really earn livelihood or connect the intervention to the livelihood. Also agreed. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Michael. And thanks to the President of the Group for their contribution.